So, Cristóvão Cordeiro here. I'm an engineering manager at Canonical, and I'm managing the team who's responsible for Ubuntu container images in general, including Chisel container images. Yeah, and I'm Rich Lander. Uh, I work at Microsoft on the .NET team, and uh, my team builds container images uh, for .NET developers. I also work on the .NET runtime, making sure that that's a, a great product and is a cloud-ready runtime. So if we just talk about containers, which have been around for quite some time now, uh, they have become a commodity, right? And they are quite easy to build, they are quite easy to consume. And throughout the way, we started thinking about what do we need to worry about when building and consuming containers? And this is a common concern. And one of the biggest aspects of consuming containers is knowing whether they are vulnerable or not. So addressing the security aspect of the container itself. This drill is kind of came along trying to address security in, in a way, because when we build smaller and smaller container images, we are removing the things that we don't need and therefore removing content that might expose our container to those securities. Um, and such vulnerabilities can be uh, detected by scanners and tools, but there's one problem though. Those tools and those scanners that are used to audit our container images, they might sometimes disregard the fact that some of the contents of that container image are lacking enough metadata and information to tell us about what actual vulnerabilities are there. This is a problem of distrolists nowadays and the practices that people are following because the common practice is to just create something big, and then you cherry pick, you go top down, take what you need into a smaller image, making sure that the final container image works. Your application needs to work, and that's fine. However, by doing so, this is a manual process and it's quite error prone as you are possibly leaving out certain files that would be useful for these scanners to tell you what vulnerabilities your container image has. So this creates what we call false negatives, right? Plenty of images that are digitalized and uh, seemingly secure do have vulnerabilities, we just don't know about them. So you cannot know what you don't know. This is where Canonical came along with the concept of chiseled images. We want to provide the Ubuntu experience for containers and both at uh, user, uh, at the user uh, perspective, but also at build time. And we all know APT, we all know Ubuntu packages. So Chisel just basically addresses that need by building a bottom-up file system, making use of existing Ubuntu packages that are in the archives and allowing us to cherry pick from those packages only the pieces and bits that we need for our application to work, but doing so in a, in a sort of deterministic way. All of those uh, pieces and bits of those packages, we call them slices, they are predefined prior to the build. So we know what we are going to, to be installing, we know what the output will be, and we are doing that with a very small and self-contained package manager, which is Chisel in this case. Probably just gonna cover two of them. So all up, we have over a thousand um, performance improvements, which, is, which will be great. Um, but of those, uh, one is we have this new dynamic GC. And so the idea there is that when an application starts, the GC uh, starts as kind of lean as possible. And then as, as the app starts to get hit by traffic, it can kind of like grow the number of GC heaps that it actually allocates on all the cores that are available on that machine. And it kind of right sizes itself, which is a uh, capability that we didn't have previously. So that's gonna be great. The second one is native AOT. And so what that is, is you take a .NET app and you actually compile it to native code. Um, and we actually have a separate, what I like to call, native managed runtime. So it's a, a very small runtime that's intended for this compile to native code scenario. And with this, it has very fast startup and we can create much smaller deployments. And you know what that works really well with? It works really well with chiseled images because chiseled images um, 
are intended to be as stripped down as possible. And so if you have a runtime platform that is also intended to be as stripped down as much as possible, you put those together and that enables really small container images. And when you think about it, when an app launches, say on Kubernetes, um, the registry pull uh, is actually part of the startup. And so if you can you know, remove 10 megabytes, 20 megabytes of space um, in that container image, it means that that startup of that app is gonna be much quicker. So we think that these two things work really well together. The chiseled containers, and both Canonical and Microsoft, we do build chiseled containers for .NET, and they are pretty much the same size now. And um, we do have several flavors of the chiseled Ubuntu containers for .NET. Some of those that are meant for self-contained .NET applications, others that are meant for ASP.NET. Uh, the smallest one we have has a compressed size of more or less 5 megabytes, and that's for self-contained applications. So if you just compile your .NET application in a self-contained way, you can just drop it in the, the chiseled .NET depths container image, and that, that container itself, it's, it's 5 megabytes. Uh, I think it's around 10 or 12 decompressed in the file system once you pull the image. Um, and then we start going to the .NET runtime, which is around 40 megabytes compressed around that. So yeah, I think Rich has yet a few more flavors of chiseled container images for AOT and Extra that are also super small, um, but have a few variations in the slices that you are installing. Right, so I can speak to that. So um, one of the things we noticed when we were doing the native AOT project is somewhat surprisingly, um, it doesn't have a dependency on the C++ standard library. So um, it just depends on libc. So like, you know, the, 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 the big .NET runtime, it depends on libc and standard C++ library. So we actually created another runtime depths image that doesn't have this um, C++ standard library and it. it just has what native AOT apps need. So that actually makes um, those, those images just one step smaller. Um, but then on the, I guess the, the other end, there's um, some users that need ICU. ICU is our biggest dependency. It's around 12 megabytes compressed. So we created this extra image and we put both ICU and TZ data in there for globalization scenarios. We called it extra just in case we wanted to add something else to it that wasn't globalization. Um, and it just means that we're enabling the, the extra lean scenarios, but at the same time, by giving this extra image, we're enabling ease of use because there's lots of folks that have to install ICU because they're processing um, textual data in multiple languages and there's really no other way to do that. Uh, when you produce uh, a container image based on chiseled, what you're going to get is an image that's uh, lacking a shell, lacking a um, package manager, and um, that it's non-root by default. And what that means is most of the, the, the cases that are going to cause alarm bells for you know, your scanners and that kind of thing, those have all been removed. And so it means that the kind of the maintenance um, cost has been significantly lowered. And so this is kind of your least friction option for cloud applications going forward. 